They say we eat with our eyes. Exotic kale. These plants are like 15 months old. That's right, do the math. Like last September, we planted these in the cold frame here. Yes, exotic kale is a vegetable. It's naturally suited to colder temperatures. No, it loves cold temperatures. It thrives on them. It brings the color and it brings the texture and the body out. This stuff is ridiculous. The colors are determined specifically by weather conditions. Colder the temperature, the brighter the colors. If you can imagine, this will actually get frosty at night. I mean, it'll freeze at times. The weather suppresses the chlorophyll production, and that allows the plants underlying tones of pinks and blues and greens and purples and bicolor combinations to develop, not only develop, but just flourish. But let's take a little closer look at these and see what you can get, because we've got about five or six different varieties of this kale. And we cut these little center leaves out and we end up with this beautiful hand laid package. It's limitless with what you can do with this. Boy, it'll have you before you even taste it. Absolutely amazing. Let's take this over and see what Chef Jamie Simpson at the Culinary Vegetable Institute can do with this. I don't know about you, I've never really seen kale like this. Anybody? I mean, this thing's crazy. Um, Obviously, you know, colorful, lots of texture, and then also like consistent, you know, in size. I'm gonna play into that a little bit here, this kale um, petite. It's just gonna kind of tile them in. I wanna build a dish that really celebrates all the different colors and the textures and the, you know, shapes of kale. That's what we're gonna do. So we're starting with almost like a, um, Almost like a hummus, but not. This is this is actually made from uh, pigeon pea, but sort of the same process. We sprout the pigeon pea, uh, blend them with uh, tahini and olive oil, and so we have this really delicious, like you know, paste. I'm gonna build this out as if it were a um, kind of as if it were a hummus plate adjacent. Um, right on top of here, we have these beautiful sprouted grains, also including pigeon pea, is um, calico peas and sprouted mustard seeds and quinoa and amaranth and little little moth peas and these beautiful little melange of, uh, of sprouted grain. So we'll just do it like a nice little single layer right on top. And I want, um, I want texture, contrast, olive oil, naturally. Olive oil, naturally. This is something we make on the farm. We call it gomasio. It's like a gomasio, sesame heavy, sodium low. Um, something we believe is like a really nice seasoning for um, for salads and, and whatnot. I'm just plugging a few little crystal lettuce leaves and send. Petite kale. <laughs>